Hello everyone, welcome to the unboxing of the Evil Alien. So I've put all the Muji back in the tin and you will have a spares bag. Now you're gonna need this. I'll just open it up and show you what's in it. So, what you've got is two square rings, three little, probably got better to see them, O-rings. These are all just spares and you will have two screws, but I've not put them in there. <laughs> um, you'll also have five air inserts. It's being very fiddly at the moment. Uh, a one mil, a one and a half mil, a two mil, a two and a half, and a three mil. I haven't fitted them in the device because it's up to you to choose which one you want for this device. So when you get it out of the tin, it will appear like this. Now, it's very simple. There's a 510 adapter on the bottom, which I'm probably going to take off because it's a bit easier to build with. And you'll notice that the top part here, the chimney, is actually respectably loose. That's because I don't want them to stick until you get some juice on there. So we'll pop that back in. Take the base off, which is just a simple matter of pulling it apart. Base, tank. And before we go any further, I'm just going to sweep all this stuff off. And I'm just going to show you how, if you need to change the tank or if you want to open it to clean it, just how to do it in the easiest way possible to risk, not risk breaking anything. So we're going to unscrew the chimney, pop the chimney down, pop the tank on top so it rests back in the chamber cap. And then I'm going to hold the tank and I'm just going to push down. And you hear that little pop, a little tiny unscrew, and that's the chamber cap, tank and chimney separated okay to refit pretty simple not even going to bother with the chimney just going to pop it back on push it down check all the corners to make sure that it's closed correctly and then take the chimney section pop it back in and tighten it up now i'm going to tighten up a you know reasonable amount because we don't want it leaking on us so i'll pop that aside for the moment and we'll come to the deck. So, on the deck, this <laughs> this is my one, so it has an airflow insert in it. Take the insert, pop it in, and then, let's get it down. God, it's hard to do on camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, screw it down nice and tight, make sure it's not coming out, all good. So, Time for a build. I'm going to do a brief build of what I do. I do a simple round coil. This is 0.32 canthal, five six wraps, about an ohmish with a three mil ID. I do know other people use two and a half mil IDs. Entirely up to you. Have fun. Experiment. So we've got to pop this onto the attic now, which is pretty straightforward for me because I can do this. I tend to wrap the wire. You can see from this one about 90 degrees around I clamp one side put it across clamp the other I also like to wiggle them off I know you've all got your own ways of doing it but I just feel it's a good way of checking if the wire is secure he says as he keeps his fingers crossed there we go so that's all done in there nicely I'm going to take my 510 adapter yeah screw that into the base take a mod any mod Screw that onto the thing. Give it a quick dry fire. So I'm going to do this off camera. Perfect. 
cool it down, take it off, because I don't want it firing on a stuff the cotton on it. Sod floor with a candle running. But gonna undo the 510 adapter. Now cotton wise, again you're all gonna vary. I'm gonna just take some from the tin here and I'm gonna snip off about that much. And I'll put it up against the thing so you can see how much I've got roughly. Right, apologies for the cut there. I did not knock the camera over. <laughs> right, so now I'm gonna put some cotton in. Very straightforward. Take my cotton from the tin, nice bit of organic Muji. I'm gonna trim off a piece, oh, that's so big. I'm gonna tear it in half. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna roll the whole thing up. I'm gonna run up nice and tight because I want to get as much of this cotton through as I can. It doesn't matter if it's really tight, the reaper will cope with it quite happily. It just wants the cotton in those wells. Now, and then with the power of magic, so what I'm going to do now, you can see I've twisted it to get it through. I actually twist it quite tight to get it through as well. Um, but what I'm going to do now is just untwist it. Get it nice and fluffy again. I'm not going to sort of intentionally fluff it, but I'm going to open it up enough that I know it's going to fill that juice well. And I don't want the ends all screwed up tight. Please notice I've also pulled enough through so that that tight end, which was really tight to get it first through the hole, is nice. It's nowhere near the coil because that probably those fibers are very dense up there now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it a couple of mil beyond the side of the alien and I'm just going to trim it. What we're looking to do is we're looking to have a nice curve that comes all the way down into the juice wells. So let's pop, very simple to do now. Take the remaining cotton, tuck it into these wells. Okay, hopefully you can see this. I apologize if uh, it's not very good. But I'm not very good with the camera. So, pop the other side in. I'm just stuffing it in. I'm, please notice so that I am maintaining that nice smooth curve because we want it to flow nicely. Now it's all in, you'll notice I've left these gaps empty. If you do run a high PG, then I'd probably recommend putting some cotton in there. You don't have to ram it in, but certainly enough to slow things down a little bit. I don't. I run lots of VG, so it doesn't make a big difference to me. I'm going to take my juice. I'm going to pour the juice in and get it nice and wet. Final little preen, I'm going to come in from the sides. I'm going to actually put my finger on the back here, but I'm just going to push my screwdriver in just between the coils, posts and the actual air intake, because I don't want any of this cotton sitting on that air intake. I want it open and ready to work. Once that's done, super stuff. You can check it again by fitting the 510 if you want, but pretty certain it's going to work, even if it does look a bit ragged. I'm just going to fit this back on. I want to get it in nice and straight. Push it in nice and tight. And then what I'm going to do, is I'm going to fit it into a device. Now, pretty straightforward. For the billet box, try and keep it with the even engraving on the front, the large one, and that air hole is on the side, which will line up here. And then it just should just pop in. And then fit your little debris in the top there. If you want to fit it into the Delro, especially if you've already filled it, turn it upside down, no juice is going anywhere. Take the top out, as I showed you in that little video yesterday, flip it around, pop it back in, and you'll see now you've got the little EVO engraving. That hole's on the, well, my left, and the little air hole's on the front. Pop it in, bosh. 
on the top here, this is the offset chimney. Now, believe it or not, in these devices, it's going to be quite hard for you to see, but they actually has an offset. So the distance from here to the screw thread is much smaller than the distance at the front here between this section and the thread again. And the Reaper is a symmetrical, sorry, the Alien is a symmetrical device, and as such, we needed to make an offset at the top so it would actually fit. It's very simple. Fill port at the front, hit the top here. Now you can either put your thumb in and turn it, that works a treat, or you can put a small tool in one of these holes and turn it around. You want these two holes, here and here, to be running parallel with the unit's width. And this big section here must be at the front with the fill port. And you'll know if you've got it right, because when you pop it in, it just looks normal. If you put it the other way around, it won't work. When you come to fit the ring, fitting this nut, do break, suck it in, it'll go in fine. If your O-ring's a bit dry, you might want to put a bit of liquid on it just to make sure everything moves happily. Fantastic. Now, whilst we're doing this, I'm just going to point out that when you come to undo it, because of the heat from the vapour coming up, it may be quite possible that the O-ring in the top of this little part will have dried out. If it's dried out, it's probably got a better grip on that offset chimney. Um, don't worry, it's pretty easy. Unscrew it, but it should be easy. You'll feel this in the first couple of turns. If it gets hard, which mine isn't, sod's law, but if it does, don't force it. Turn it back half a turn and come back and try again. And you should find it realigns everything and it lets you unscrew it all. Do not force anything. If you have any problems, for whatever the reason, you're more than welcome to contact me. So we've popped them. Filling. Nice and straightforward, but it's very important to understand this device is designed to be filled upside down. Not sideways, not upright. If you fill it sideways, you're going to fill into the tank and it's going to go through the fill holes and then fill up inside the chamber, which is not what we want. The purpose of filling upside down is to remove the chance of liquid going into that chamber. It's just like filling a cup like this. So I'm just going to pop my nail in, pop the uh, door open, take my juice, shove it in the hole. And fill it up. I've got to fill it right up. Um, you can you can sort of turn it over a little bit. Just bear in mind that the top here is where those holes go. But if you want maximum fill like I've done there, I've tilted it slightly to the side and back a bit. And I'll get a lot of juice. And then flip it around the other way. And you'll see you've got a couple of bubbles coming in here. The system pressure's reset. It's filling my cotton up now. We are good to go.